Fire! Fire! <laughs> I can't have been the only one thinking that. What is world building? I don't mean what is it in a technical sense, I mean what makes good world building? What makes a fictional place feel real? There's a lot of people who would say detail, or scale, or size, but I uh, disagree. Don't get me wrong, if you planned out your fictional city all the way down to its tax system a hundred years in the past, then more power to you, but that doesn't engage me in your world. Even if every street corner is mapped out, or you have like a hundred different cities, it doesn't change how much I enjoy it. Now, there's a lot of people who would maybe say uh, creativity, even my own thumbnails, don't listen to it, it's a lie, world building just gets more clicks. While creativity is entertaining by itself and good to have inside your world building, it's not like exclusive to it. Abstract ideas and animations, for instance, can have a lot of creativity without really having fictional places or even a story. You can have little sprinkles of creativity that can last a minute or even a second. Hardly anything you could write a wiki on. There's a lot of people who'd probably say realism, but yeah, I'd still disagree, kinda. Even if you know exactly why your city became what it is due to like the fertility of the soil or the defensiveness of its surrounding mountains, then like cool, that's better than not having it worked out and it might result in world building, but just that knowledge alone in your brain like doesn't make people see your world any differently. So what do I think it is? Well, unfortunately I would say that it's been like a long time since I've really felt that good kind of feeling of world building, so I haven't really got the chance to analyze what exactly that feeling comes from. But I did just watch Arcane. This show really exploded in popularity, huh? Not to brag, but most people in the League community actually saw this coming. I don't know what it is, but League has some great writing, and they're not like working with a lot. This is a fucking MOBA. You try having a fleshed out world when everyone no life's on a single map and your audience's only viewpoint is exclusively given via possessed bird. But a lot of champions, especially in the last like uh, seven years or so, have ruined like really good characters and one-liners like Kled, Alawi, Braum, Silas, Kindred. I mean, there are some exceptions. Imagine a place where it's always night and you're holding faith for a dawn that never comes. I, I don't have to imagine. Uh, I've been there. The, Down there, I was surrounded Bitch, is this night. essay due tomorrow? You but trying to reach a fucking word alone. count? There's also specific champion designers who lead the pack. The designer responsible for Vi, Jinx, and Echo is definitely worthy of note, and I'm very glad Arcane started with, like, most of this guy's champions. Just wait until we get to this one, though. That's gonna be fun. Anyway, my point is that there's a ton of memorable characters and a lot of really interesting lore and locations to explore, but again, it's not the size. Despite not tapping into any of this, Jesus Christ, I still get that feeling of world building from Arcane, even just from the first episode. And so, here's my theory. World building is not size, or scale, or realism, or creativity. World building is connection. Or maybe reuse if you don't want to sound like a wanker, but I think connection is more technically accurate. Anyway, what I mean is, so, uh, Piltover and the Undercity both have unique aesthetics. One has a clean white gold and blue steampunk aesthetic, while the Undercity is dark with green accents with technology that's more associated with green liquids and smoke. This is very important in tying each area together. If you just saw a street and then another street, it makes a connection so broad that you don't even notice it. Even if you see them one after the other, they could just simply be like completely different streets from like anywhere in the world. But in Arcane, these identifiers connect to each other to create what feels like a specific place in the world. The clothes, the architecture, all the little tools and devices, they all connect together with these identifiers to create, in this case, the feeling of a location world building. But this idea of connection as world building goes further. It's one thing to draw a connection with the same thing in the same place in the same context, but Arcane does much more than this. Because we've identified what's from Piltover and what's from Zorn, I'm just going to call it Zorn even though it's technically the Undercity, when things get dragged from one area to the other, you can immediately identify what's not in its origin place and it draws a connection back to Piltover even though Piltover isn't currently on screen. Furthermore, it links this specific item from Piltover to Zorn because now that's, you know, where it currently is. When something important is stolen from Piltover and you see it inside the setting of Zorn, contrasting the two visuals, it feels like two separate places that are still relevant to each other. And when two enforcers, whose garbs are clearly that of Piltover, waltz in following the same stolen items, you get that same feeling again. The feeling of world building doesn't come from things that exist as standalone, the feeling comes from their interactions and the connections you draw between them. The more you connect and the deeper you connect, the more real your world feels. 
and they are constantly making these connections with the two places. When the main group escape Piltover by going down the garbage chute, it's green and mucky and in total contrast to the rest of Piltover, and as they slide down, it allows you to easily make another tangible connection between Zorn and Piltover, that being the way to access it and its general positioning to it. Meanwhile, the Piltover enforcers keep gas masks on them when they walk around outside in Zorn. They don't use that in Piltover, implying it's a way that Piltover interacts with Zorn specifically, again, drawing another connection. Even just the fact that the same stones are being used in two different places in the world in radically different contexts, with Jace and Victor trying to stabilize it and Jinx trying to specifically make use of the fact that it's unstable, makes these places and scenes feel connected. Unlike a lot of MacGuffins in storytelling, the stones themselves don't feel like this one-off thing to serve a single plot point, they feel fleshed out and multi-purpose because they're being reused. And when you get to the time skip in Arcane, these connections explode. Both Shimmer and Hextech change everything about their relevant areas. The same Hextech now connects to a landmark in the world, the Hextech Gate, which has its own ramifications in the plot, and will even reappear to play symbolic visual elements in different scenes. Even Vi's gauntlets aren't just things made specifically for her. Not only do they have a connection to the Hextech, but they are also a tool created as part of the first wave of Hextech that was specifically meant to be a tool rather than a weapon. But in Zorn, it's Shimmer. It's uses a recreational drug, it's using this weird nose thing, you can see its side effects on people, and it's using a lot of technology like Savika's arm. And as the series progresses, both Vi and Jinx will make use of it to recover from injuries. Shimmer even branches outwards, the council members mentioned it as like a potential threat, and the Firefly's introduction- Fireflies? No, it's like the fire lights, isn't it? <laughs> like already written in the script. It's the firelights, right? The, even the firelights uh, introduction is them interacting with Shimmer. Often the new places you'll go to in the setting hill have a direct link to the world building already set up. Like the Shimmer Ward, which is what I was calling it until I remember that's from Critical Role, it was never called that. <laughs> Places in general return constantly. The Council, the Last Drop, the Bridge to Topside, like is used in the opening, it's used when Vanda talks to Vi about her choices, there's fights there, Council policy influences it, uh, and fucking the Last Drop, it goes through, is, 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 isn't just dropped after Vanda disappears, or... Yeah, Vanda disappears, I guess. Uh, but like, it's taken over by Silco instead. So it's like places will always be reused. Adventure stories often have this like big problem where with this, where like each new arc will take place in a totally different new place with totally new world building, and it makes things start to feel disconnected. But good stories will always keep the outside world relevant to the stories told, even if it's not the main focus. But it's not even just places and big MacGuffins like Hextech, even a lot of smaller stuff in Arcane gets reused to create that link. Silco's eye stabbing thing gets reused in entirely different contexts, first to show how much he trusts Jinx and then to later to demonstrate that the trust has been broken. This even happens with the masks that the enforcers use, instead being used by Silco to show the assembly that they've grown used to topside air. There's almost a feeling of object permanence whenever something is reused in a story. It's, it's a connection between two scenes. I think most take stories for granted, assuming that just because our media has its own brand and intended watch order, the people will innately feel like it's part of the same thing. But what is a story? It's not real, it's just images on screen played in a certain order that we interpret as a story. If you erased every connection between each image, it would cease to be a story. The idea of world building is just to do the opposite direction of that, by adding more and deeper connections than simply just connecting each new image to the previous. When something feels as if it persists past its initial inception and reason for being created, it makes it feel like not just one image in a series of images, it feels like a world. But therein lies the challenge. The more you reuse something and the more differently you use it, the bigger the chances are of creating a contradiction. If I establish Hextech as blue and glowy in one scene, I can't make it purple and liquidy in the next. If I establish Shimmer as a drug with side effects, I can't reuse it in another scene on someone without side effects, or at least not without explaining why. This creates a really interesting snowballing problem with world building. The more you connect your world together, the deeper it feels, but there's a breaking point because you also increase the number of things you have to keep track of, so it increases the chances of you accidentally breaking your world and cuts your flexibility for how you can reuse things in future. If you're not cluey, you might not have even realized that you've retroactively contradicted what you were doing with it in the past. Yeah, but I think it's worth it. A lot of the issue with how people world build is that they'll make a place, fully flesh it out with lots of different things, but never intertwine them. And then when they move on to the next place, they don't intertwine the new place with the last place either. So what you end up being left with isn't a world, it's it's a list of ideas. You might say you wrote it on a map, so it's connected via its positioning, but your audience won't experience your story through a map. They experience it scene by scene, line by line, image by image. And if they can't see the connection through that, then there is no connection. 
But hey, perhaps that's the smarter route. Um, yeah, or at least the simpler one. The easier one. God only knows it's gonna be way easier to hammer out a story like that, because writing like Arcane does, it begs the question, where do you stop world building? How far do you go? Because the more you link your world together, the better it feels. So you can hypothetically do this ad infinitum, but that breaking point exists somewhere along the line, and I don't know where. What I do know is if Arcane does its interweaving like this, but for this, we might very well find that breaking point. I say this honestly, good luck season two.